Good morning students. We are discussing on railway and airport engineering. Well, we are starting uh, our subject discussion with the first uh, segment that is the railway engineering. Well, uh, going thorough in the railway engineering, first of all, let's uh, discuss about rail transport. What is rail transport? Well, rail transport is a means of transferring the passenger and goods on a wheeled vehicle that are running on the rails, which are probably located on the tracks. Well, here in the figure, you can see this two different type of train, which are purposefully uh, made for passengers and goods. Well, if we compare it about uh, road transportation, okay, where the vehicles run on the prepared flat surface, these rail vehicles are directionally guided by the tracks on which they run. These tracks usually consist of steel rails installed uh, that installed on sleepers set on ballast on which the rolling stops usually fitted with metal wheels those moves okay well other variations are possible uh, such as a slab track can be also constructed wherein uh, the rails are fastened to a concrete foundation those resting on a prepared subsurface well uh, in the abroad uh, some at some places and some locations they have constructed such slab tracks okay wherein a rails are fastened on a concrete foundation so this is a brief intro about rail transport well if we discuss about indian railways well indian railways is among the world largest rail network and its route land network is spread over about 67,956 kilometers with the 13,169 passenger train, 8,479 freight trains and it flying 23 million travelers and 3 million tons of freight that is a good okay daily from 7,349 stations. So probably we can say this is the largest among all the networks on the world. So also we can say this Indian railway network is recognized as one of the largest railway system in the world under a single management. Also the railway network is uh, ideal for long distance travel and the movement of bulk commodities apart from being an energy efficient and economic mode of conveyance and transport. While Indian Railways is a preferred career of engineering in our country. Okay? The government of India has focused on um, investing in a railway infrastructure by making investor friendly policies. It has moved quickly to uh, enable foreign uh, direct investment that is the organization in railways to improve infrastructure for freight that is goods and high speed trains while at present several domestic and foreign companies are also looking to invest in the Indian railway projects so this is how our Indian railways are well known for its track well known for its infrastructure in the railways and also it gives a number of opportunity for the engineers to work now discuss on the factors that affecting the indian railway okay the pattern of indian railway network has been influenced by geographical economic and political factors while talking about the geographical factors, the North Indian plain with its level land, the high density population and rich agriculture 
all these things present the most favorable conditions for development of the brains. However, the presence of large number of rivers makes this thing uh, necessary to construct the bridges which involve heavy expenditure. Okay. We are able to uh, construct the railway, but also there are many rivers. So that what we need to do to construct that railway, we need to pass a bridge. Okay, and the construction of the railway will include this construction cost of this uh, bridge construction also. And uh, there are particularly no railways in the flood plains also, because there are many rivers in the Bihar and Assam. Well. The region uh, from South India is not as suitable as the northern plain, the Himalaya region uh, and the north is almost entirely devoid of railways due to its rugged topography. So this is also uh, play the important role while you are selecting the sites to construct the railways. A railway link between Jammu and Kashmir Valley is being planned at very high cost and the sandy areas of Rajasthan are also not favorable for the railways. So these are uh, you know kind of geographical conditions okay because uh, when we planned a railway in the Jammu and Kashmir okay it requires heavy cost because we uh, have to provide some extra constructions uh, rather than the railways okay. We can provide the railways but with a heavy construction. So it is somewhere not favorable uh, for the Indian railway also. Okay, uh, as well as same in Rajasthan, the sandy soil and the sandy areas. Okay, so this is also not a favorable condition because this sandy uh, soil and sandy areas may not able to bear that heavy load coming from the trains. Okay, there was no railway line between Jodhpur and Jaisalmer till 1966. Similarly, uh, forested areas of Madhya Pradesh are also unfavorable for the development of the railways. Now, if we talk about the economic factors, well, railways develop more in economically advanced area where the need for railway network is felt much more. Okay. Conversely, railways bring economic prosperity to the areas through which they pass. So this is because of the economic linkage that we find in highest density of railways near some big urban and industrial centers and in areas which are rich in minerals and agricultural resources. Talking about the political uh, and administrative factors. The present railway system in India is the legacy of British rule. Now this British administration planned the direction and the pattern of the railway lines in such a way that they could exploit the valuable raw materials of the India for benefit of their industries and flood and flood the Indian markets with the finished goods from the Britain. So this was the economic and administrative factors those affected the Indian railway. Okay, as you can see that here already uh, Britishers have prepared their or Brit Britishers have constructed the railway network over here. So overcome from all of this that will be uh, very costly. So anyhow we have to follow uh, some of that network. Okay, while we are constructing the Indian railway or why while we are enhancing the railway network in India. Well, after uh, discussing about these factors, let's uh, discuss some of the development of our Indian railway. Those are happened recently. Okay, well the first that is in the January 2021, our Prime Minister, Honorable uh, Mr. Narendra Modi, have flagged off the world's first double stack long haul container train from New Adli in Haryana and also to New Kishanganj in Rajasthan. Well, in January 2021, Hyundai Motor India Limited has announced that 
it has exported 125 cars to the Nepal via Indian Railways. And that will definitely affect the economy of Indian Railway. Okay, so the export is claimed to be eco friendly. Well, in December in 2020, uh, Northeast Frontier Railway spokesperson stated that at least six construction projects, including three new lines and three double lines project will be completed in 2021. Among these three new rail lines project, two will be international lines connecting to the neighboring countries like Bangladesh and Nepal. Then uh, November 26, 2020, National High Speed Rail Corporation Limited signed an agreement with LNT to design and construct 47% of alignment works for the Mumbai Ahmedabad bullet train projects. The Indian Railways completed eight major projects by taking advantage of the coronavirus lockdown and this project included three super critical projects with a combined length of 68 kilometers three critical projects with the combined length of 45 kilometers and upgradation of the entire 689 kilometer of the railway line in Bihar well in the September 2020 the Indian Railways announced the clone train scheme wherein it planned to run a clone train with a train of same number to halt and provide relief to the wait-listed passengers over a high passenger traffic rules. Okay, so these are the recent developments that happened in our Indian Railway. Okay, so this is all brief about Indian Railway. Now we move forward to some technical terms regarding railway lines. And with that, first we will start with a permanent way. Well, what is a permanent way? A finished or a finished or completed track of a railway is known as a permanent way. Here in this figure, you can see the single line and double line uh, path of the railway, wherein you can find out this is the permanent land width from this point to this point. So this is the permanent way or the width of permanent way. Okay. Well, uh, there are a few requirements of uh, permanent way while well, discussing that. First is that the gauge should be correct and uniform. The rail should be in a proper level. The alignment should be correct so that it should be uh, free from kinks and uh, irregularities. That the gradient should be uniform and if any changes of the gradient should be followed by smooth vertical curve. The track should be uh, resilient that means it should have uh, some elastic property so that uh, there must be a certain amount of elasticity in the track. The track should have enough lateral strength, the drainage system should be perfect. The radius and super elevation on the curves should be properly designed and maintained. Joints that including points and crossing should be properly designed and maintained. Uh, there should be uh, adequate provision for easy renewals and replacement of the rails or the parts of uh, railways. The various components of the track such as rails, uh, sleepers, ballast, fittings, the formation of the railway, etc., must be fully satisfied the requirement for which they have been provided. Okay, so these are the requirement, the basic requirement of permanent way. So, students, I hope you understand the topic properly. Okay, we are summing up today's session. Thank you so much for your kind attention. I will see you in the next lecture.